This is CCS TV, empowering voices, inspiring futures. We are excited to be here today at the Marvin House for our second business builder work. Yeah, second business builder workshop in 2024. We've got two more planned later in the year, and uh, we're glad to see you all here today. So um, today's topic, as you know, is the solar eclipse coming when? April 8th, a month from today, and uh, we, we have been working alongside the Visitors Bureau, who's really taken the lead, Chautauqua County and others, to get this message out over the last number of months and encourage our business community to take advantage of this opportunity that we expect to see with visitors coming to the area. So first, uh, before we jump into the program, I want to thank our sponsors for the program at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, everything we do would not be possible without the support of our members and our sponsors uh, to enable activities like today. I want to thank, first of all, our host today, the Marvin Community House. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you, Leslie, and obviously a beautiful facility here. If you want to learn more, talk to Leslie. Uh, we also have sponsoring us today Brooks TLC Hospital System Kaleida, Jamestown Community College, the Chautauqua County Visitors Bureau, Chautauqua County Emergency Services, Marks Cole Observatory, Media One Radio Group, Observer, and The Post Journal. Please thank them for their support as well. I also just want to let everybody know as well that uh, the county media information officer is here to record today's session and help share it, the message again with folks who can't join us this morning. So thank you, Justin, uh, for your assistance in that. And uh, our speakers today, we will start off for today's session with three individual presentations. We'll take a short break for restroom uh, refreshments and networking, and then we'll come back for a Q&A panel with any questions you might have. And, um, and then we'll just kind of network and conclude the morning. So uh, today we're going to hear from Tom Traub, who is chair of the Marts Cole Observatory Solar Eclipse Committee and is a certified NASA Eclipse Ambassador. We will also hear from Noel Gutman, the County Director of Emergency Services, who have been hard at work preparing and looking at the emergency service aspect as well as other aspects. And we will also hear from Andrew Nixon and Scott uh, from the Chautauqua County Visitors Bureau on their efforts. So I'm going to kick it right off here and introduce our first speaker, Tom Traub. In addition to being a NASA Eclipse Ambassador, Tom has personally witnessed nine solar eclipses within that number, five total solar eclipses. So Tom knows what he's talking about. Come on up. Uh, can everybody hear me fine? If, 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 if we're good, then... Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to talk too loud so that we don't uh, rattle and shake everybody here. So thank you uh, for having us here. Uh, again, this is an exciting time. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event for most people. Uh, and I want to give you just a brief understanding of what eclipses are and then what to expect and how to see uh, what's going to happen. Uh, if you've never seen a total eclipse, I don't know, by a raise of hands, has anybody here ever seen a total eclipse? All right, good. You're newbies. That's always fun. So at this point here, I guess we'll start. Uh, let's see if I can get the process moving on this one here. Okay. Oh, yeah, this one isn't. So next slide, please. So what are the two types of eclipses that we've heard of? The first and the one that we're most concerned about is a solar eclipse. When you cannot see the sun because the moon is in the way. And they do not occur very frequently. The other type is a lunar eclipse. And that's when you can't see the moon because the earth is in the way. And they happen much more frequently. Now, the big difference between the two is 
is the shadows. It's the shadows that are cast. Whether it's the shadow of the earth on the moon, whether it's the shadow of the moon on the earth. In the case of a lunar eclipse, anywhere that the moon is above the horizon, people are going to be able to see the eclipse. So one half of the earth that's facing towards the moon is going to see it. So instead of a million people, you could have a billion people see that. So it's much more, it, it's much more readily visible. In the case of a solar eclipse, the diameter of the shadow path to be underneath it is anywhere from approximately 60 to 120 miles wide. And so unless you're in that narrow path as it goes across the earth, you'll never see the, the full effects and events of the total eclipse. Next. So why are eclipses so rare? First of all, of course, the earth travels around the sun one time a year. But during that time, the moon travels around the earth 13 times, which comes down to the thing is, why don't we see one once a month or some, maybe even twice a month? Well, it's because the moon's path around the earth isn't quite exactly in the same alignment as the earth and the sun are. First of all, it's tilted five degrees. So that means that part of the time it lies above that earth-sun line. Another part of the time it's below that. So when the shadows come, they may pass over the top of the earth or underneath the earth. It's only where the orbit of the moon passes through that earth-sun line, there's a narrow window that we can have an eclipse where the shadow of the moon actually passes on the surface of the earth. Now the other thing is, is the moon is not in a circular orbit. Sometimes it's closer, sometimes it's farther away. The best way to look at that is, you've always heard of super moons. Well, what that just means is, when the moon's closest to the earth, it's largest in the size. And so, in a super moon, it's a full moon. We can see it. It's 13% brighter, and it's about 5 or 6% larger in the sky. Now, the opposite case is, when we have the moon farthest away from us, it's much smaller in the sky. The problem is, then it becomes so small, it won't totally cover the face of the sun. And so you can't have a total eclipse, but you'll have an annular eclipse. Next slide, please. So this is what we're talking about. So here you have the moon too low or the moon too high in the same way on the other side. But when they pass through that angle, then the shadow can come onto the Earth or the Earth's shadow can go onto the moon. So it happens two different times when it passes through that plane. Next, next one, please. So, then we have the three main types of eclipses. A partial eclipse means you're not in that path. But if you're looking at the sky with proper protection, you will see the moon obscure a portion of the sun's surface. So it's not totally covered, but only partially covered. In a total eclipse, the moon is close enough to the earth to be larger than the size of the sun, so it totally covers the sun, and the shadow cone actually hits the surface of the earth, and you have all the effects of totality. If it's too far away, then you get an annular eclipse. And here you can see that the, the moon does not totally cover the sun, even though it's centered on it. And that's because it was too far away. Uh, this example over here was taken on October the 14th, 2023, when I was on the center line in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in October. And a lot of the same effects are there, but it's just not quite the same. Next one. So, frequency. Anywhere, anywhere on the surface of the Earth, you can expect that about once every 18 months, 
there is going to be a solar eclipse. But you, most people are going to have to travel to get there. Any one given spot on the Earth can expect a total solar eclipse to come over them once every 350 to 400 years. That's how rare the event is. So this is a special one for us. Each eclipse only covers a tiny portion of the Earth and lasts for only a few minutes at each location. Next slide. So, what we're seeing over here on your right is the path that the shadow of the moon is going to take across the Earth as the moon is moving around the Earth and the Earth is rotating. Anywhere within that yellow line, you are going to have totality. Outside of that, you'll see there's a, darker, a lighter shaded area. That's where partial eclipses are occurring. You have a lot of the same things. You see the coverage in that, but it never totally covers the sun. And until you have the total coverage, you don't see the full spectacular changes that occur during totality. So, out of 1,761 eclipses that have occurred in our area between 1500 BC to 3000 AD, only 34 of those are going to be either total, annular, or a hybrid. This is the first time I'm going to talk about a hybrid. Hybrid is, is the sun and the moon are exactly the same size. But because the moon's edges are irregular, some portions of the sun are going to peek through valleys. And so you get what they call Bailey's beads, these little spots of light around the outside edge of the sun. And it will occur during the process of totality, too. In fact, if there's a very deep one right near the beginning of totality, you get what they call the diamond ring effect. And that's this brilliant point of sunlight, and the inner corona is, is going to be shining around the outside of the moon. And they call that the diamond ring effect. So, out of the 34 that occurred here, 16 were total, 17 were annular, and one was hybrid. So the last eclipse in our area, for the majority of the area, except for up around Silver Creek and Buffalo, where they had one a little sooner, was June the 16th, 1806. You know, if you were up in, in around the Buffalo area, you could have sent one on January the 24th, 1925. So we have our next one, of course, one month from today. And then the next one after that, October the 26th, 2144. So this is your once in a lifetime event for anybody in this area. So you want to take advantage of it. Because if you want to see another one, you're going to have to travel. So the last annular eclipse that occurred here, uh, majority of the area, was on May the 10th, 1994. Some people may remember that. Again, you had, you had your little uh, pinhole projectors or you had your eclipse glasses and you saw the, the sun get covered. But the next one, July the 23rd, 2093. So, only one hybrid eclipse has ever occurred here. And that was 119... 1868. Believe it or not, it actually went through Warren County and Chautauqua County and went over the and went over the Mars Cole Observatory. Unfortunately, there was no record of it. It did happen, but there's no record of it. And it lasted only 10 seconds. Next. So, here here we come to the fun stuff now. Here here is the path from this is the southern edge of totality. That means if you're below that line, you will not see all the effects of a total eclipse. If you're above this line, the same thing. This is the path. The center of it is where you're going to see the longest duration. And as you go towards each edge, it's going to be less. As you can see, it's going to go over. Here's Cleveland, here's Erie, here's Buffalo. And we have... 
Jamestown here. We have Warren, Pennsylvania here. And Olean is just outside of the path of totality. Next. So what does it mean around here? Okay, the center line travels over Lake Erie, so uh, a lot of people aren't going to go in there, but what they are going to do is they're going to try to get along the lake shore because that's where the long, next longest amount of time is, 3 minutes and 40, 40 seconds. Between there and the center line, you're losing 5 seconds. So is it really worth going out on a boat in the lake to get that extra 5 seconds? Uh, I think most people are going to say no. So Buffalo, that, the, the center line comes back on just below downtown Buffalo. You're going to get 3 minutes and 45 seconds. And as it continues to move this way to the north and east, the, the amount of time that you're going to have underneath it is going to get less and less because the speed of the shadow is going to move faster and faster. When it comes over us, the shadow of the moon is going to be moving at 2,293 miles an hour. But the width of the shadow is 110 miles wide. And it's about, it's actually like an oval because of how it sits on the earth. And it's going to be about 220 miles long. We can go to the next one. So, when it's over us here in, in Chautauqua County, this is what the oval of the shadow is going to be like. So when it's centered over us, it'll also be in Conneaut, Ohio, and almost over to Rochester. And it'll be up, in, up at the Hamilton, Canada, and all the way down to Warren, Pennsylvania, because there's Warren right there. So depending upon what section you get here, depends on how long you're going to be in eclipse. In Warren, in Warren we're going to see about 50 seconds of totality. At the observatory here, we're now over the state line, we're looking at 2 minutes and 12 seconds. If you're in Lakewood, 3 minutes and 5 seconds. By the time you get to the shoreline, you're up at 3 minutes and 40 seconds. So anywhere in this, you're going to see totality. And it's going to be approximately at 3.18 in the afternoon, plus or minus several seconds because of the size of this cone and the shape of it depends on what time it'll start for you and what time it will end for you. Now, the other thing is, the first coverage of the sun for our area here is going to be at about 2.03 in the afternoon is when it's going to start. And then totality will hit, and then after totality is finished, it will un keep on uncovering the sun until about 4.31 in the afternoon. So, about a two-hour time span. Next one, please. So what are we going to see? Well, this picture right here was taken August the 21st, 2017, on the center line of totality in Beatrice, Nebraska. Beatrice, Nebraska is a town of 9,000 people. There were 40,000 people in town for that event. And it was like that all the way across the eclipse path. But you can see, look at it, it's dark out. You're going to see the brighter stars in the sky and the brighter planets. Around the outside edges, you're looking out towards the outside the shadow. Because this is actually the shadow of the moon that's overhead on you. You're going to see 360 degrees of sunset. When the, when the moon's shadow starts approaching, you're actually going to see it come up over the top of you. It's sort of an eerie, it's sort of an eerie feeling. And this one here, there was supposed to be one of the clearest spots to be for it. We had some slight clouds, but you could still see everything. In fact, in some cases here, the clouds actually sort of magnified the effect and made it even cooler. So this is the middle line of totality, except it's an annular eclipse. So there is no totality. And look it. It looks just like it's a sunny day out there. People are all relaxed back. They've got their solar glasses on to protect their eyes, and they're watching the shadow. In fact, what you're watching is what's right over there in the lower right. That is the pictures that were t I took from Canarville, Utah, on the center line on May 20th. 
2012. So what are you going to see? This is what it's going to look like. This is what you're going to see in the sky where the sun's at. You're going to see this black hole, which is actually the moon, covering the sun. Around the outside edge of that, you're going to see the corona of the sun, which is the sun's outer atmosphere. And it's going to have a, a particular shape. It's not going to look like this, because every eclipse is different and depends on the activity on the sun. We are getting to a uh, solar maximum, so the, there will be polar streamers coming out of the top and long, thin contrails. It's really hard to describe. You just have to see it for yourself. Uh, if there's any high filaments above the surface of the sun that will get above the edge of the moon, you'll see those. Those are called prominences. And they are of hydrogen gas, and they'll be a pinkish-red color. So there will be color with this event also. Next, next slide. So how are we going to watch this? And this is the most important thing for safety reasons. First of all, you need to have protection. If you do not protect your eyes, and sunglasses do not work, you will permanently damage your eyes. You need to have ISO-certified solar glasses that allow you to have your eyes protected both through the infrared through the ultraviolet. The, the ISO standard is ISO 12312-2. That will protect your eyes by dimming the sun by over 10,000 times so that you can look at it safely for, longer, for long periods of time. Now, again, we wouldn't, we wouldn't suggest you just continuously stare at the sun the whole time because there's other things to be witnessing around you that's going to be happening. But you want to use your solar glasses. If you have solar glasses, one of the things you want to do is your solar glasses, you want to have them put on in front of your regular glasses, not behind them. And the reason why is because if you have a stronger prescription, it's going to concentrate more light trying to go through these glasses, and that's not what you want. Do not try to look at the sun with binoculars or with telescopes, because all you're doing is just concentrating more sunlight, and it means the damage happens even faster. Another important thing. If you're going to use a cell phone and you want to take pictures, guess what? Your cell phone is going to need protection also. If you don't, you'll burn out the imager in your cell phone. And you'll no longer be taking pictures with your cell phone. So if you do, you need to take a, a partial piece of a solar glass and you have it over there. Now, when you do this, don't do this. So you're looking at it like this while you're focusing it on there with no protection on your eye because you've just destroyed your eyes but saved your cell phone. You know, if you're going to try to do it like that, you need to have it, your eyes downward and the cell phone put up there. You'll be able to see it on your screen. Now, at the same time, don't think that you can have solar glasses on with your cell phone because you won't see the screen on your cell phone. So, please... Be careful. They have solar viewers. That's another type of way to, to look at the sun. They're just like this one here. Again, same, same principle. You put it up here like this, and you can stare, and you can look at the sun. And it, it, it's safe. The safest way is to do it with pinhole projection. That's where you have a piece of cardboard or some other item, and you put a hole in it. Now, you don't look through this at the sun. The idea is you use it to project an image of the sun onto an object. And as the sun gets covered, you're going to see a crescent. It's going to form a crescent. You're going to see an image of what's going on, what, the same thing you see through your glasses. Now, again, your back is going to be to the sun, and you're going to be looking away at this projection. If you have a colander or anything else that can create little holes, you're going to create multiple different images of the sun with these crescents at different sizes and phases as the time goes on. Next. So, big question. Everybody says, well, what about the weather? Well, this is a picture from last year. 
on April the 8th, in the afternoon on 2023. It was clear here. In fact, in the last 10 years, we have had six days with less than 40% clouds in the sky. So we are looking very, very good. In fact, in 25 years, the average is that there will be 61% clouds in the sky. That means 39% clear. So even if we do have clouds in the sky, there are going to be holes in it. So you'll still be able to see the eclipse. In fact, you would have to go all the way down into southern central Texas before you start to get a better chance of having clearer skies than we have here. And that's because the lake, Lake Erie, stabilizes the air around here and helps to suppress the clouds being built by solar heating. And that's one of the other things that happens is as, as the sun gets covered, it's like turning a giant rheostat down on the solar heating. Temperature is going to get cold. Winds are going to pick up because the solar heating is turned off. What it can do is it can either create clouds or it can dissipate clouds. I've seen it both ways in, in, in all the eclipses that I've been at. So you'll always have to be prepared for that because there's always going to be this microwave environment that nobody thinks about or happens. But overall, over the last 80 years of records between Erie, Dunkirk, Fredonia, Buffalo, Jamestown, and Bradford, Pennsylvania, we have a very good chance of seeing the eclipse. The, the number of overcast days is actually only less than 20%. So there will be some, some form of cloudiness, more than likely. But we had a high percentage of also clear days, where it's been absolutely clear with no clouds. Next, please. So here comes the fun part. So how many people are in the path of totality right now for this year? 31,625,000 people within 100 miles on either side. We're going to add in another 75 million, 300,000. If we go to 200 miles, it jumps to 149.5 million people. That is basically a four or five hour drive for many of these people. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to say, hey, let's drive and go into the eclipse. Can we have the next picture? This is not waterways. These are the main roads, arteries, that are going into the eclipse path. This is based on what happened on August the 21st, 2017 as far as traffic flow. All these people are going to be driving this way to get into the eclipse. Look at it, our area over here. A lot. This is a prime spot. In fact, when I was talking to people in Albuquerque, where are you going? Oh, well, we're going to go into western New York. So they're coming. And they will be coming from all over the United States to see this event. Now, that will happen over a day or two. Some people have already booked for multiple days, or they're camping or making a vacation of it. So the influx will be there, and they'll be wanting to eat and, 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 and stay and see activities while they're here. And that will go on. And then on the day of the eclipse, it'll get worse. And then what happens is, after the eclipse, it's bad because everybody wants to leave at the same time. Oh, now you have all those huge influx of people in there and they're all trying to leave. That's when we start running into the problems. So for here, uh, this area, western New York, most of New York, between 239,000 to 515,000 people are expected, or more. These are based, again, on, on what happened in 2017. 
uh, northwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, they're looking at 65,000 to 230,000. So it will happen. The people will be coming in there. And they will be trying to find anywhere they can to watch this. So if they can't get to where they want to, and it's getting close to eclipse time, they're going to pull off to the edge of the road. And they're just going to pull off and get out of their cars and watch. So roads are going to get very, very congested. And I know Noel will have a lot to say on that piece of it. So next one. So in preparation, these are a couple of things that you really need to know. Watch the weather and be prepared because the eclipse can change sky conditions. Plan on, urban, plan on arriving as early as possible if you're going to be traveling. We suggest, highly suggest, that if you can see two or three days beforehand where the sun is in the sky at 3.18, 3.20 in the afternoon, and you can do a hand with on either side of that position, you are going to see the whole eclipse from beginning to end. And make that your spot where you're going to sit down and enjoy the eclipse. Because you don't want to be on the roads. You, want to be you, know, you don't want to be caught in traffic. Those are, those are terrible things. You know, traffic is going to be bad, and it's going to get worse. Right now, hotels and motels, campgrounds, bed and breakfast, they're already filled up. If they aren't filled up, they should be getting filled up even more. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to talk about the cell phone service. 2017, the cell phones went down. The tr there was such high traffic on it, they couldn't hold it. Now, I know Neil... I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, Noel will tell you a lot about that. So, again, if you're planning on staying anywhere, have them stay for an extra day or so, so that you can sort of filter out at a much slower rate. Uh, comes to taking pictures. If this is your first time, don't spend time with your cameras and everything trying to take a picture because... All you're fiddling around is you're missing the rare spectacle that's going on around you. Enjoy it. Ab absorb in the moment. You know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. There's going to be tens of thousands of other people that are going to be taking pictures of the eclipse. You'll have your ability to get another picture of the eclipse by somebody that's taken them. Myself, I will be taking pictures of the eclipse. But I also have seen it many, many times. But everyone is unique. And so really enjoy that. And with that, I guess uh, I'm finished. And I guess it's on to our next presenter. Thanks, Tom. And um, very exciting. And I appreciate you again sharing your insights and experiences and uh, a little science lesson with us there. It was getting uh, fascinating, just fascinating. Um, so next I'm going to bring up Noel Gutman, the County Director for Emergency Services. And All right, I, not nearly as much science in mine, a little more doom and gloom in the uh, you know, emergency services aspects that we're going to do. Um, a, lot, a lot of the same information, obviously some of the same, almost some of the same pictures that we were we, that we're using, you know, we're putting out a lot of the same message, and I'm going to concentrate a little bit on, you know, the emergency preparedness and really what we're what we're looking at, and you know, some of the same same information on the timelines. Just you know, the the thing I like to present and say is how rare this is and how much you know this is, how unique this is, and you know, I like to tell you know about a year and a half ago when, when at one of my Western Emergency Manager meetings we had a, a Buffalo science teacher present this, and, and a collective group of us were like, yeah, it's three minutes, who cares? You know, big deal. What's 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 the, what's the problem? And then we learn from the educated peoples of, yeah, it's three minutes or the, the totality is, but it's everything that it brings with it and all the the people. And and I'm going to talk many times over on, on my biggest concern is the traffic. And, and you heard Tom talk about that and give you some estimates of, of some what we're expecting and some information about it. But it's not all doom and gloom. There is there is a lot of good that's going to come about this. You know, from from that the community part of it. So I thought that, you know, just to, to back up what, what Tom was saying, the rarity of it, you know, that's just kind of a, a, a neat picture I found that really shows you the, the, the rarity of it. 
And the, the research I was doing, it showed since 1776, it only happened 21 times in the continental United States. You know, so it's, it really is a, a significant event. When I hear people say, I'm, I'm getting out of town that day, I'm like, no, stay. This is, this is something you really need to be here for. Don't, don't take the opportunity, don't be afraid of the traffic, don't be afraid of the impact it's gonna have. Be part, be part of the solution, not part of the people leaving. You know, there are some agencies, uh, US DOT and New York State DOT are, are kind of calling us one of the, the largest mass travel day in, in, in US history. You know, one of, the, one of the big differences from the 2017 eclipse, which I reference a lot for their after action reports and learning, you know, from the mistakes they made and the positives that were made, is, I'll be honest, I didn't really know when 2017 was going on. It really didn't get that much press that I saw, you know, and just on general social media. This one's different. This has garnered a ton of social media interest. Social media effect is, is huge, it's just magnifying. So this has got a really big following coming to our area, coming to that path. And the interesting, you, you've seen this diagram or a diagram like it, and look at that path. If you wanna see it, you have to be in that path. And you know, one thing, you know, I, I always try to do these presentations, I always like to bring it back to, to our county. You know, and our county is, is, is big in tourism, that's one of our biggest you know, commodities and we promote that. So people that have come here for, for you know, recreational activities, vacation, when they're thinking, well, where am I gonna go? I vacation in Chautauqua County, I'm going back there. So you know, th that's the, the, the market we're looking at, those people that are planning to come back here because they know our area already. You know, so that we know what the resources are gonna be. You know, half the US population lives within 250 miles of the path. And there is some speculation and, and estimation on the emergency management side across the country that it could be around 80% of the US population is in the path that day. You know, so people are coming. And this is, this is, this is a legitimate event. And one of the things I've seen that's interesting, in the last two months of my planning, we've gone from like three or four known events to I think 39 or more at this point. So it really has seen that it's been a, a big wake up of people realizing that, yeah, this is coming. This is, this is a big event. You know, just a, you know, a, a a little, a little counter to what, what Tom said about Lake Erie. So when I first started talking with the Coast Guard, they're like, yeah, we're not too worried about it. So if I need a Coast Guard helicopter and emergency services, it comes out of Detroit. It's 45 minutes by air to Lake, to Lake Erie Shoreline in Chautauqua County. The Coast Guard is now repositioning an aircraft to Buffalo, and they are bringing in extra ships from across the country to work in the Buffalo area of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, because they now realize their estimations from Detroit to Niagara Falls, there will be tens of thousands of people on Lake Erie that want to be in that center line. So if Lake Erie is a navigatable day that day, Lake Erie is going to be very busy. As, as we anticipate, if Chautauqua Lake is a you know, good, calm day, there's going to be a lot of people on the water. You know, so we have some concerns. You know, like I said, a 50-year history of the weather shows an average temperature of 48 to 52 degrees. So it might just be a brisk day to begin with. But now if we have people that get exposed to the water or outside concerns, it could be a, a uh, problematic day for people getting exposure issues. One of the other things, and it's just coincidental, is uh, in about a week or so, New York's gonna announce that it's the annual New York State burn ban. This is right in the middle of the burn ban. And I, I predict a very active burn season because the low snowpack and the, the, how dry the ground is right now one of the reasons I say that is a couple weeks ago we had a structure fire in the south part of the county and debris from that fire caused a field fire at a significant, uh, about a 300 by 300 foot field, about the size of a football field, really. Just from debris of that fire. That doesn't happen in February. It should, you know, so I think our conditions for burn, burn season is gonna be very high. So, as you heard, and, and I'll keep saying, when people stop in these large, become these large gathering areas, these large fields, discarded smoking material, someone who starts a campfire, cars idling wrong, spitting out the spark, whatever, there's a higher potential for unintentional vegetation burn. So that's a, that's a concern. I know that we've done a press release from our office kind of addressing that. But that also gives me some concerns on the emergency, emergency management side of, of burn patients. You know, we get some large, large crowds and they're, they're, that could be another issue. Um, so that's, that's just a, a good map I like to show, just really show, breaks down that path and shows you know, where, 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 how we're affected. You know, again, pretty much the same thing. You know, the assumptions we're taking on the emergency management side is it's gonna be a five-day event. And people are already, you know, planning to come in on Friday. And the way I kind of like to say, you know, people are, how, is it gonna start on Friday and be absolutely busy? I think Friday, you're gonna see a noticeable increase. And then Saturday, you're like, wow, there's a lot of cars. 
Sundays would be like, wow, there's a lot more cars than I thought. And then Mondays would be like, I just want to hide in a cave. Okay. <laughs> I really, it, it's kind of hard to say the, the numbers. I've heard numbers of ever from 50 to 250,000 people. Based on the hotels, based on the, the thing, I, I am preparing for it to be that larger number. And every time I give one of these presentations, I always say, I hope I'm wrong. I've never wanted to be as wrong in my life as I could, because if I'm wrong and we have a nice calm day, no big deal. No, no, because I look at things in the emergency management side of things. And people, if, if they're upset that we're not that busy, that's like saying, well, I'm upset I didn't use my fire extinguisher in my kitchen. Okay. You know. Some interesting things looking at, at the, the history of this is, is stores and restaurants t typically have gone dry. You know, they ran out of supplies because there were so many visitors, so many people wanted to be there. Gas stations ran out, ran out of gas. So one of the things I'm telling people to do is, this is Western New York. We do storms well. Plan like it's a winter storm. The, the, you know, we don't know when emergencies happen, but this is kind of a planned emergency. We know exactly where. We know exactly when. Plan for it. You know, we have still have plenty of time. If you're going to have a block party, a house party, whatever, don't wait till Saturday and Sunday to go get your supplies for, for the party. Get them the week or two before. You know, another thing that was interesting is pharmacies. Pharmacies ran out of medications. Because, like, hey, I'm going to Jamestown to watch this event, and they called CVS and Jamestown and said, yeah, you know, I want my blood pressure meds picked up there that week I'm there. So make sure that if you have medication needs, those are, those are thought of ahead of time. Um, ironically, a lot of people are going to travel without planning. They're just going to say, you know what, I'm going to wing it, I'm going to watch the weather, and I'm just going to try and pick and go where I want. So people, you know, are, you know, you might find it hard to believe, sometimes people don't pay attention, but they're just going to travel without, without cause and just get to where they need to go. Um, you know, like I said, we talked already, I've talked a lot about the weather. I like to be an optimistic. I don't like to be, you know, a negative about things. I think we're going to have a perfectly blue sky that day. You know, and I always kind of jokingly say, I wish I'd paid more attention in earth science in high school. I'm making up for it now with everything I'm learning about this and the weather. Uh, you know, that's, there are some interesting weather phenomenons, and Tom touched on it. You got the, 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 the temperature drop and the clouds clearing. I think we're going to have a great day that day. I'm just, I'm, again, I'm being very optimistic about it. You know, we already know the, we already know the timeline. You know, it's going to cross Ripley at, you know, approximately 3, 316. And that totality um, changes a little bit by your, your elevation in the, in the county. Some of the interesting parts that we saw from 2017 is people are looking for the building tops, hilltops, cliffs, dark areas. A good friend of mine says, ah, I live on a, dirt, on, a, on a back dirt road, I'll be fine. I'm like, no, you probably won't. People want to leave, you know, I live in Mayville, okay? Main Street in Mayville has a lot of, lot of at night, it looks like a landing zone because it's, it's got great street lights. People don't want to stay in their front yard in, in front of Mayville and watch it, they want to get where it's dark. So those rural areas are going to be populated. 2017, when you, and I, again, I reference 2017 a lot because that's what we learned from. And, you know, we're, I, I'm proud of saying that we're making the mark for 120 years from now, 45 years from now, for people looking at what we did. We don't get a do-over at this. You know, and it's, you know, when we look at these things, the, the, the planning part of it is huge. So, um, you know, we talked typically 70% of the people in 2017 wanted to leave 15 minutes after totality. What happens to a road when everyone wants to leave at the same time? Interstate 80, I think it was in Iowa, or excuse me, in Wyoming, they had 56 miles of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic for 12 hours right after, the, right after the eclipse. So I am really concerned about the I-90 corridor, that Route 5 to Route 20, I-90, I-86, and the infinite wisdom of whoever decided to authorize a bridge project that's going to be down to one lane on I-86. Uh, you know, so I-86 will, will, is going to add to the, the bridge over the Chautauqua Lake is going to add to our problems, okay? Cellular networks, we did talk, you know, talk Tom touched on, on the cells. Uh, our office has tried, so all, albeit so far unsuccessfully, to get uh, the, the major cell car carriers to bring in extra cell towers. Unfortunately, and fortunately, I guess, we are part of an international event. You know, uh, not just a local event, not a state event, not just a national event, but this is you know, truly now an international event, and everybody in that path that you saw is contacting these companies to get those cell towers, to get communications, and unfortunately, they have decided that those are going to the more urban areas, so your Buffalo's, Rochester, Syracuse's across, the, across that path are going to see that. Uh, there are some, you know, this is, if you still have a landline, you're fine. 
Um, there are some other resources you can do. There are satellite phone companies that you can call and rent phones. Or if you have a, a really big concern about needing to be tied in for communication for family emergencies and stuff, you actually can call and rent a satellite phone. And I, I would just Google it, and there's a bunch of companies out there that, that have that ability. So you could have some communication. One of the problems of what they found of the, why the cell towers got so jammed up, and I'm guilty of it, I get in my car, my phone auto-connects to my car, it brings up Waze, and I'm auto automatically streaming GPS in my truck every time I get into it. That burns up a lot of data. So that was a large reason that the, the cell towers had a, such, such a draw to them. Interestingly, in 2017, when you looked at Google Maps and Waze, the, the, the path of totality was all red for the roads. So again, traffic is our biggest issue. I have been very vocal from the pretty much the first presentation I did that, it, you know, of, of closing the schools that day. As a parent, I would not want my child on a bus at 3.15 in the afternoon. You know, what could normally be a 30-minute ride might be five hours. And then what is every good parent going to do? They're going to get in their car and go find their kids and add to the traffic problem. I, I know that's what I would do. So I, I've been very vocal about the schools need to be closed. And it's a, it's a delicate balance of wanting to make sure that businesses are open for, to, to reap the profits of the people but also finding where we can eliminate some traffic. So I, I know I was told that Cummings Engine, they're, they're shutting down today. That's, that's a huge impact. Um, I've talked to, you know, I, I go to a local diner up in the Dwinville area, and I told her she normally op close on Mondays. I said, do you really need to think be, being open on Mondays? And she, she ta we talked about it, and she's like, yeah, that's a great idea. So these restaurants and stuff that might be closed on Monday, which, are, which unfortunately there's a lot, you know, that say, I'm, I'm closed that day, there, there's a really good, prosperous chance of, of good income that day for, for being open, planning to be open that day. You know, that, that's kind of what we're expecting. On I, again, I hope I'm wrong. I will be very happy to be wrong that traffic's not a problem. But, you know, 2017 showed that there was just an absolute ton of traffic that just occurred, you know, after, right after it and stayed that way for 8 to 13 hours in some places. So anything that we can do to... to decongest the highways and the traffic. One of my concerns for emergency services is, is the hospitals. I can tell you that we've been working with all three hospitals in the county. They are all very well prepared, well, well aware of the event. They're doing things like there is no elective surgeries that day. Obviously, if emergencies come up, we'll deal with them. But Allegheny Health Network, which runs Westfield Hospital, is bringing in another helicopter from Pittsburgh. That's huge for us that day. So, you know, I have a concern. We, if we do a, an inter-facility patient transport for Westfield Hospital, St. Vincent, which we do multiple times a day is normally a 40 minute trip. That could be a four or five hour trip that day. So having additional airships in the area is gonna be huge for us, you know, and huge for the community. You know, again, we kinda already talked about that. So any, you know, anything that if businesses are planning to be open, if they can, you know, call ahead and, and, and get some of those bigger stocks ahead of time, that, that's what's gonna help, help bring this, this thing in. Because when you look at the, the after act reports of 2017, businesses showed record profits. Bed tax numbers were up. Um, I'm not a finance guy by any, any stroke of imagination. I like to say this is going to be more gooder for the economy. <laughs> okay. You know, opportunities, tourism and marketing. You know, this is, you know, a, a great opportunity, and as we're already seeing for Chautauqua County to once again say, hey, this is a place to come, not only for this, but everything else that we do. You know, it's educationally it's it's extremely you know this this will help tie into the sciences when, and there's a big push across the country you know to pro promote the sciences and education so this is a great way to tie into that you know the tourism and marketing it's again 2017 we, we're learning a lot from there and i just think this is going to be way bigger than that event just because of the duration and the, and the popularity that's getting so the other day i checked about, about once or twice a week, I get on Hotels.com. It was $700 a night at Clarion Point here in Jamestown. You know, and I, I, I guess I check that routinely, and that's pretty typical across that entire path of, of the eclipse. Those numbers are pretty consistent. The, or two weeks ago, I think I checked it, and it was $900. So it, it, I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to pay that. So, you know, that's in KOA Campground Route 5. One of, one of my friends was, was talking to the owner there. He was taking reservations three years ago. So it's, you know, they are coming. This is going to be a destination area for this. My big message, again, has been prepare like it's a winter storm. We know it's coming. Don't plan on going out that weekend for stuff you don't have to. Stay home, enjoy it. You know, there's been a national 
push of come early, stay late. You know, if people are coming in, don't, don't leave Monday. Enjoy Monday, leave Tuesday. You know, I don't, I don't think, you know, I think if we get a lot of people to do that, it's just, you know, that'll help decongest the roads. You know, look, look at our supplies and inventories and, and work with your, your distributors to make sure we have that stuff ahead of time because everyone's going to be looking for it. You know, we can plan for emergencies and you know, we don't know where they're going to happen, but this one we do. This We know exactly when, we know exactly where. So we have, and we, or we're a month out, we have plenty of time to still make a lot of positive plans for this. I always promote the, the, this website when I'm talking about getting out to, you know, like I said, the last, I think I counted the other day was 39 known events on. I don't know if that number's gone up or not, but this is the this is the place I've been directing people because they have a great interactive map. There's all that information on there, and looking at the interactive map on there, that route, as I said, that that uh, that I 90 corridor, boy, the wineries are, are up there on five and twenty are are really planning a lot of events. So that's going to be a very populous area along the Lake Erie shoreline. You know, Tom touched on glasses. Um, you know, Chautauqua County did buy a large supply of glasses to try and distribute. I know there are some people selling them, so we're not trying to compete with that. You know, but, uh, you know, if, if there is, you know, you know, I'm trying to partner with like municipalities to get glasses out, our libraries, our schools, whoever, if, if there's a need for glasses, that email right there, you can, you can send, send to that glasses at chqgov.com. That'll go to me, and we'll put that on our distribution list, and I'll have a large supply for the chamber and the visitor bureau today. You know, the goal is, is to make sure that, you know, people, one, have a safe event, and this is a way that, you know, that we can get people to, to do it safely. Tom had some great ideas, and, and you know, I'm not, not going to you know, rehash the glasses, but you know, get the glasses however you get them and, and make sure that they're, they're out there. And you know, our office you know, can help, help with that. 511 New York, real-time traffic app. That will be, you know, the, we all live by, by the apps anymore. I don't, not too many people have their, still have their rotary flip phones, so it's pretty much everything's off a smartphone. So you know, there's a lot of good resources out there. Uh, New York Alert, this is, I, this is something I put, this is actually a good program, this is something the state does well. Um, this is for, you know, winter storms, this, you can get alerts for your county, you know, if your child lives in Monroe County, you can get alerts for that county just because you, you want to be concerned about it. Everything from, you know, tornadoes to notification that a sex offender moved within 25 miles of your house. So it's a free service, very, just sign up to New York Alert, um, I'd highly recommend that. And also with our app, you know, this is our emergency services app. It's a free download. There is, you know, uh, power, I, I know we all love power outages, right? But this one right here is a power outage indicator that you click on that, it'll go right to NYSEG or National Grids. How many people are National Grid customers in here? How many people have the app already from National Grid? If you, it, it's actually a great app. It'll tell you exactly where that outage is and where it's affecting already it's actually fed right off their emergency center in National Grid headquarters. It'll tell you that it's being looked at, the estimated time to repair, and NYSEG has the same thing, so it's a, a good thing, good thing to, to download, and you know, at least you can get some answers that way. But we're going to be pushing out more information, traffic safety stuff up here, that 511 New York is, is, is off of here. So this is really one shop stopping for a lot of emergency preparedness. Um, yeah, like I said, I didn't want to duplicate too much of what you already heard, but you know, the number one thing that we're, we're concerned about is traffic and getting from point A to point B and, you know, that preparedness message ahead of there. So, is there any questions I can try and answer on the emergency services side or some of the, the preparations that we're doing? Okay. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks, Noel. We'll get our computer switched over here for our last presentation, and I appreciate... Um, Obviously, we've started to shift the conversation talking about, you know, what the eclipse is, what makes this so spectacular and unique for our area, to what we're expecting. And I think as Noel kind of hit the nail on the head, right, trying to find that delicate balance between all of the safety and preparedness aspects, but also the tremendous opportunity, you know, business opportunity for businesses, attractions, et cetera, in our communities. So our um, third presenter is uh, Andrew Nixon, and I believe you're going to bring Scott Shelters up as well to, from Chautauqua County Visitors Bureau, and uh, they're going to talk about the efforts the Visitors Bureau has been undertaking for many months now, really helping to take the lead in um, spreading the word about the eclipse, recruiting visitors. I know Scott is the mastermind behind turn four minutes into four days of total fun, and um, helping again to coordinate those business activities. So I'll kick it over to you, Andrew. 
Thank you, Dan. One moment, please. Again, I'm Andrew Nixon. I'm with Chautauqua County Visitors Bureau. And uh, for part of our presentation and some of the questions afterwards, we're going to uh, turn to Scott Shelters. If you want to raise your hand, Scott. Uh, Scott is indeed the mastermind behind the content and the communication in our office. And a lot of the work relative to the eclipse has fallen to him. Um, so we did this a few months ago, and our focus at that time was really on um, trying to convince people that there was a legitimacy to uh, planning for the eclipse and being part of it. Uh, though some businesses had already bought in, many were still mulling over what, the, the, what they should do. Uh, so we were a part of creating buy-in at that time. I think uh, since then and currently, and certainly for the next crazy month, which is coming up, our job is trying to help businesses get themselves in front of the vi uh, visiting Eclipse viewer through specific information resources. Um, people will turn a lot of places for information, um, but we have tried to put everything that we can get our hands on in one place. Um, we're also focusing on marketing and advertising, and I'll go through some specifics on that on a later slide. We want to also be supportive to what county government says needs to happen and what they want people to know, whether they are residents or visitors to the area. And uh, we're trying to ensure that the Eclipse viewers, especially visitors to the area, have a place to safely view and know about options for what else to see and do in the area. We do see this as an opportunity, as some people have already said, to bring people in a little early, hopefully have them stay later, and while they're in the area, uh, they're, they're enjoying attractions and restaurants and things that the area has to offer. And this is all in a very non-typical visitor time for our area. March and April are the slowest times of the year, and so this is a huge shot in the arm as far as, as that goes. So, uh, next slide. So I mentioned Scott right off the bat. But uh, so much of what he and the rest of us are, are doing is trying to gather information. It's not easy. <laughs> um, you know, people don't uh, provide information readily, and we're trying to, to gather it. So we're trying to gather, organize, and provide information resources to provide to the visitors who will be coming here for the eclipse. We said that on the previous slide. And uh, we see sort of two groups of visitors. And it's those who are committed already. These people need to have more information about supporting activities and amenities, so places to eat, things to see and do, details about available viewing sites. And then there are the visitors who are still considering and planning a visit. Uh, they're maybe, uh, as was indicated by our other speakers, thinking late in the process, hey, maybe I'll go enjoy this eclipse. And they've heard about the path of totality. And so they start their planning now or maybe just a week beforehand. And you know, options for them are going to be kind of limited. But a key consideration is uh, where will they stay? If they're coming for more than, say, a couple hours out of the area, they really are going to need to stay. And the lodging options are slowly uh, being taken up. We also want to convey to them the appeal of viewing sites. Um, a big consideration is is selecting a viewing site. And we want people to have information through our website about what's going on at a particular viewing site. So it could be up at the Clarion Hotel and Steelbound Brewery in Dunkirk, right next to the pier. Or it could be the, the Heron Enterprises and Campground or Midway Park. It could be Point Gratiot in Dunkirk, where there's not an official event, but there's a lot of space and beach available. So we want people to know, you know what's going to be there for them if they choose a site. We also want local hotels and others, uh, you know, waiters and waitresses at restaurants, to be able to answer questions about how people can find out more information, how they can talk about a specific site. And if they don't know, which is usually the case uh, with tourism industry employees, at least where to send people, which is tourchautauqua.com. So next slide. So we're going to ask Scott to come up, and I'm going to do the clicker, and Scott's going to talk about this slide, and then we're going to show some specific web pages. 
Hi everyone, as Andrew mentioned, I'm Scott Shelters with the Visitors Bureau and I've been working on gathering information for the Eclipse and also getting it on our website, tourchautauqua.com, which I think Andrew will uh, show after we start this slide. Um, as Andrew was discussed previously, we have a lot of Eclipse viewing sites on our website. Um, we're adding more as they come in. If you're planning to uh, serve as a viewing site the day of the eclipse, please let me know, as well as if you're having an event, which is, uh, there's some overlap here, but uh, largely an event is having some sort of entertainment or activity in addition to just being a viewing site as some of the parks are. Uh, hotels and accommodations, so we've been gathering information from our hotels on who still has availability, um, and that is also on our website. A lot of the campgrounds have also opened early specifically for the Eclipse, um, including some of the seasonal uh, B&Bs and vacation homes, and a lot of those are beginning to fill up. I'd say right now there's a little bit more availability at uh, the campgrounds than there is at the hotels, which are, are getting close to full in most cases, and we're also seeing uh, places book up on April 8th as well. So there are a fair number of people who are going to be staying over on Monday night as well. Um, dining and shopping and attractions, you know, we're trying to, to add as much information as we can on what specifically will be available that weekend, particularly on Sunday and Monday when a lot of places, particularly restaurants, are normally closed. And a lot of places are opening up for the Eclipse. And again, let us know if, if your business is. Um, also some blog articles offering suggestions on what to do in the area the weekend of the eclipse and we're linking to the county's page on safety information. Andrew's going to pull up the website now. So this is featured at the top of our homepage page tourchautauqua.com. There we go. And if you Yes. And if you click that button that says to learn more, that will take you to our Eclipse resources. And we've made the home page of the entire website last month. And if Andrew scrolls down here, we have some text and links, and then we go to several categories of the website where you can get more information on viewing sites, a blog, events, uh, open lodging and dining and attractions. Um, so that's what Andrew's going to click on the viewing sites there. So, uh, as Noel was mentioning, I mean, there are a great number of events and viewing sites right now, uh, probably more that, that can be added as we learn about them. And this is the, the viewing sites page, so it ranges from very large events and, and viewing sites to, to smaller ones too, you know, outside of, of shops and restaurants. Uh, but there are some, so definitely going to be some large gatherings, including at the, the airport, at some of the golf courses. And we'll include some text there under each of these, as well as links and contact information on what you can expect at that viewing site. Um, they're emphasizing uh, parking. Uh, you can put cost information. Or is there going to be a warm-up possibility? It's called food provided. That's all included on their listing. And that's what we're encouraging people to do, not just say you can come and watch the Eclipse. I should mention, too, that we're also working with I Love New York to get as much of this information as we can onto their website. Uh, and in specifically the information Andrew was just discussing, which is you know specifics that you can find at each of these viewing sites, from uh, restrooms to warming locations, ADA accessibility. Uh, the city of Dunkirk is having a, a large event. Uh, Andrew referred to it earlier at the the Clarion and Steelbound Brewing, and we have a very long description on that as well as their their poster up here and then contact information so uh, really ideally we're trying to just get as much information that the visitor could possibly need on what to expect at a specific viewing site yeah. 
Andrew's going to go over to events here. Uh, again, there are a lot of them planned, including in the days leading up to the eclipse. So we have some weekend long events at campgrounds, wineries, breweries, um, really throughout the county. Andrew's switching to the desktop calendar view here, and I think you have it filtered on the eclipse. Yes, yeah, so you can see that there's a lot going on beginning Friday the 5th, and then particularly on April 8th, there is a very large number of events going on. Here you can see this is the event happening at the Bemis Point Golf Club and Tap House. So we've got information on really everything that's happening there, including the live music, and then contact information. And ideally, we'll have a link to your website. Yeah, but you you get the idea. And there, that's on Facebook. Yeah. So again, just please let us know if you're going to be open the days of the eclipse, leading up to the eclipse and the day of the eclipse, and we'll get that information here. If you still have availability um, at your hotel, your B&B, your campground, please let us know. Or if you've sold out, let us, let us know that too, and we'll remove you from the list so you're not getting calls for those days. Here, this is a, a list of attractions that have let us know they're going to be open, uh, as well as uh, restaurants, shops. So typically, our website information is open like this. These are just special pages. Normally, there's a picture, a lengthy description, like we showed you, uh, or a series of thumbnails that you can use to get to things. This is kind of just our quick list of focusing on what's committed to being open during that time frame. Yes, and then these links will go to a uh, typical destination listing on our website in most cases. Okay, and yeah, this is Touching on what we've been discussing here is that you can please contact me. I can give you my business card after this. If you have information on what you have planned for the Eclipse, we will get that on our website. We're just trying to be a, sort of a central repository for all of that information. Okay, next slide, Andrew. We have uh, created some print materials as well, including a rat card that we've been distributing. This has a QR code to the Eclipse resources on our website. And also posters. So, and these are available at the registration table if you would like to take one, please do. Um, these have been very popular and we're uh, probably going to run out of these posters shortly, so please grab one if you're interested. Thanks, Scott. Scott's really, you know, has done and is continuing to do a, a big job. It's an extra job with gathering this information. He does think some of the people we're talking to are crazy and that they're disorganized, but I'm only joking. Is this being recorded? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we, we are really making an effort to reach out to businesses, whether they're members of the Visitors Bureau or non-members, and uh, asking them to give us information, add to the information they already have, uh, be real specific so that we can provide information to the visitor. We are seeing big increases to our website in, in terms of traffic. So, you know, people might be doing a, a search on the internet, they might be responding to ads. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the advertising and marketing. Um, we're doing a modest campaign in terms of advertising placements because we, we've not really known are we going to be completely overwhelmed and when that would happen or is there still room to fill up? And so we're still advertising at this point, but we're focusing on Facebook ads, search engine ads, which is like when you go into uh, a browser like Google and you put in a, some search terms like Eclipse in New York and, uh, or Eclipse destinations. And uh, we pay money to have this area come up in the search results. 
and we're emphasizing our advertising placements in uh, atypical markets, so not Cleveland, not Erie, not Buffalo, not Rochester, only a little bit in Pittsburgh, and we're focusing maybe or, or mainly to the east. So those routes that Tom showed where you've got all the gnarled, congested roads, that's where we're focusing the advertising. And uh, <laughs> so, but that's really Pennsylvania's problem, isn't it? Yeah. So the reason for that is, you know, these other destinations that we typically advertise to are uh, in the path of totality and they're less likely to feel the need to, to travel. Um, whereas we feel people from the east especially will travel toward the center line of totality toward our area. Um, we also just do posts on Facebook and Instagram. We've advertised in a couple of print publications. Well, actually, the Discover Upstate New York website and the Post Journal Evening Observer is doing an eclipse tabloid, which comes out a few days, a week to a few days before the eclipse. And we've decided to advertise in that as a good option also. And uh, Scott is working with I Love New York staff on making sure many of the things that are on our website get added to the I Love New York website for eclipse information. They'll add some things, not all things. So again, you know, uh, well, another thing we want to do is to help in the processes that the county government has, and one is distribution of eclipse viewing glasses. I, there are a lot of eclipse glasses have been uh, provided by the county and uh, paid for by visitors to the area in, pi in prior years. The occupancy tax revenue that built up over time and was in the reserve has been used to to help get uh, glasses, and those are available not just to visitors, but I think to local residents and, and kids and everything. So that's a nice, that was a nice idea from the county. And uh, we also want to share information provided by the county emergency services. And I think the, uh, the county executive's office is doing the same thing through a website that, or a web page that they've developed, you know, putting up some safety information and then links to more information that's specific. So. Uh, good job there, but we're trying to also push people in that direction if they have those kind of questions so we're not putting out different messages. Uh, next slide. So again, uh, send us your information. It's not too late to add information or change information. We will put it up. Scott's email is communications at tourchautauqua.com or you can call our office at that number. Tom, that's for you. It's about the eclipse. <laughs> and uh, now is the time, uh, this has been said by our previous two speakers, but now is the time to sort of nail down your preparations, physical preparations on site relative to your space, eyes, especially if you're in the food industry, and safety, you know, what, what are you going to do under uh, difficult situations? A lot of people say, uh, I have an Eclipse viewing site, we're going to register 60 customers and they've filled up. But what if you have like 120 people just show up? Do you have a plan for that? So um, now's the, the month to think about that. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here during the panel, and so will Scott. And uh, thank Eclipse. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Andrew and Scott. And uh, so what we're going to do, we normally book our workshops as a two-hour session. We booked an hour and a half today. So to respect everybody's schedule in case you have to run, I just am going to jump into a couple group Q&A if anybody has anything. If we do not have to leave immediately, we're, the Marvin House is a very gracious host, so we can stay after and maybe ask direct questions if you have something for Tom, Noel, or Andrew. Before we do a couple questions, I do want to pass along a couple chamber updates uh, or opportunities as well. And again, we have tried to uh, participate in a role of education and then again, assistance with our partners at Visitors Bureau, the county, Mart School Observatory, and others. So uh, if you don't pick up some of the Tour Chautauqua materials today, we have some of those available in our office as well. We're happy to get those to you. I think they'd be a great resource as was pointed out, to have at your business that weekend because you're going to be fielding a lot of questions and hopefully you're going to be very busy. So you could say, check out this poster or this rack card, scan the QR code and see what you can find, right? Also, uh, as was talked about, the county government has eclipse glasses. I'm going to 
Noel on the spot and say, I see you have an unwrapped stack there. So if anybody wants to leave with a few today, uh, you can grab those. As mentioned, the Visitors Bureau is helping distribute. We at the Chamber are helping distribute as well. We're trying to get them out mainly to businesses and organizations and groups. There's others really uh, targeted at individuals like the municipalities, the library system. So if you, you know, need a larger quantity, a couple dozen or something for your business, please reach out to us and we will be facilitating that with a more official announcement from the county to come next week. The last thing from the chamber, um, uh, we are also working on some efforts to help advertise local businesses that are open special hours, offering specials, whatever it might be during that time frame. Not in an either or with the efforts of the Visitors Bureau and others, it's an and. So uh, please reach out to us, similar to the Visitors Bureau, chamber member, non-chamber member. We just want to get the word out because, again, you might be offering special hours that someone may not easily find that weekend on your Facebook or your website. So I think we're all trying to get that message out in as many places as we can to capitalize as much as we can on this opportunity. So uh, that's it. Like I said, we'll take a couple questions, I think, if everybody's okay with that. If you do have to jump up and head out, please don't feel uh, bashful or awkward. Go ahead and do that. We understand everybody's busy. But I have a, one quick question to kick it off because I remember from our session in the fall, and I don't think anybody specified this today, do I have to keep my glasses on for the entire eclipse? All right, I see Lori and Becky nodding their heads. Tom, you look like you want to take it. Totality hits. That's when the moon covers the sun 100%. Then it's safe to take your glasses off and observe the event. And then right at the very end of the totality, you need to get your glasses back on. Again, the, the problem is, be, because the light will be so much dimmer because it'll be fairly dark, our normal response to look away from a bright object like the sun is diminished. And then you end up staring longer at the sun than what you should do. So uh, just be aware of that. So it's like, okay, watch the partial phases up until fully covered. You can't see it in the glasses anymore. It's probably safe to take off your, your glasses and, and, and enjoy the event. But then just have a, a general idea. It'll be the fastest two to four minutes of your life. It'll go by faster than you ever expect. And uh, that's usually what catches everybody off track. Because like, all of a sudden, boom, the sun's out again. It's like, so that if you don't have them, if you still have them off, instantly, you know, just don't look at the sun anymore. And just keep your glasses back on. And then you can watch the partial phases again. Great. Thanks. Anybody have a question? Yeah. I'm going to go back here. Thanks. Some of the people will go outside to view the event. For those folks who are going to be staying at home looking out the window, any special precautions to be taken? No, I was going to the same thing. They, they need to have eye protection because looking through your, your the glasses and your you know windows and such in your home and that, they won't change much, but you still need to have your eyes protected. So you'd still wear your solar glasses even if you're looking through a, a window in a home or whatever. Yes? Uh, with the uh, anticipation of moving other assets and apparatuses in the area for emergencies, is there to be expected a delay for even police uh, services if it's so congested in traffic? I, I know speaking with our law enforcement partners, they're all up staffing um, and, and really trying to make sure they have as many, many officers out as they can. Yeah, the 2017 event did show there was an increase in calls for police services, fire service, EMS, and hospitalizations. I know many of our fire departments um, are staffing not only that day but that weekend to try and you know try and staff an engine or ambulance crew. Where you know we have 42 fire departments in the county, 39 of them are volunteer, and many of those departments are are coming with a staffing problem to help help alleviate that time frame. But I know you're speaking with our law enforcement partners, you know, they're they're up staffing to try and solve that issue as well.
how, like, if they just don't talk. Street lights. I know it's light, but. Street lights will come on. Right. But, I mean, if they're early, but they would still be able, they would still be able to are. see the eclipse, but they wouldn't be potentially able to see all the effects right. of the eclipse. Right. I just made that, but like if they're at home or they're in you a can see if you can see where the sun's at, the sun you're going to be able out, right? to see the power. Okay. And I, I think we talked about this in the fall as well as as Tom was saying earlier. Today, see where the sun is in the sky roughly at three fifteen. And then I guess again as business owners, you'd be prepared that weekend if somebody, like you said, walked in and said, I don't really have a place to go, you could say, Well, if you're here at three fifteen, it's gonna be right there, you know. So Okay, uh, if, if it's cloudy, you're still going to see a lot of the effects. The sky is still going to get dark, it's, the temperatures are still going to drop. You're, you're going to see it, still a lot of the effects. The only thing is you may not see the sun. You may not actually physically see the sun and the corona around it. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. you know, clouds are a possible obstruction. And the eclipse won't come through the clouds. But you'll still see a lot of the effects of it. Now, the other thing you have to remember is that even if it is slightly cloudy and that, that doesn't mean it's, you don't have to wear solar protection because the ultraviolet and the infrared rays are still coming through the clouds and you're still going to be focused by your eyes on your retina and could still cause damage even though they've been dimmed down by clouds. Yeah. Can you talk about liability <laughs> for businesses that were handing out glasses? Did anyone do any research on on that if we have any liability for people that damage our eyes. I don't, uh, nobody's jumping at the mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, I haven't seen, I'll let you talk, I'll give a quick answer and then, cause you've experienced this nine times. So I would appreciate your in input too. So uh, I don't have an answer on that. However, I know again, the county is gonna be doing a public rollout next week with the glasses distribution and a lot is gonna be focused on safety and some information from the health department. And they also have some resources as well to folks who are gonna get the glasses from the county that are gonna outline, you know, um, how to use the glasses uh, and kind of touch on that liability piece, I believe. Tom, uh, how has this been handled before? Uh, in, in previous years, I mean, there have been very spotty, erratic cases of where there was the potential that damage could have come, but it was usually based on somebody doing outside of what would be considered common sense usage. Uh, and again, there's not a large amount of statistics as to, even from the last eclipse, as to how many people actually had retinal damage caused because of the eclipse event. Uh, it, it's so small, it's, it's hard to do. But, you know, that's part of what we're trying to do is, you know, is get the word out there, you know, be protected. One of the biggest questions that I have had asked lately is by the students in that, well, I have a dog. You know, uh, what, 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 what about my dog? Is, uh, is his eyes going to be damaged or whatever? I said, well, if you care about your pet enough, bring them indoors. Bring them into an area where they can't see the eclipse. Then you know they're safe. You don't have to worry about it. Because they don't know, they don't know what's going on and, and you know, they're, they're going to be sort of oblivious to it other than the fact that it's going to look like it's either dawn out or dusk out. And they're going to act appropriately that way. having copies of the materials that the county has, right, that we could give you, and then if you chose it, you know, as you handed out the glasses to make more copies of that or something, you know, at least you'd have that as a resource as a business or organization as well uh, on hand. Anything else? I think it's important that, I think you guys said it, that the glasses are handed out are ISO approved, certified, so that, I mean, they're saying that it's safe, so if you're used, if you're handing out the right set of glasses, then be a problem. There's a certain ISO number that you have to 
Yeah, it's ISO 12312-2. And the county did make sure of that. I ordered them, so there. Mark Cole has some too. Well, thanks everybody. I don't want to cut us off, but like I said as well, I'm we'll respectful of time. It, again, if you'd like to hang out and network with each other or ask our panelists any questions, please do so. And I meant to mention that, Lori. Uh, again, county glasses and distribution really kicking off next week, but also other groups are selling glasses as a fundraiser, including the Mart School Observatory. So if you'd like to support them and others, please do so. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. CCS TV, empowering voices, inspiring futures.